Hello, my name is Dr. Robert Ang, and I'm here to present the clinical outcomes after biomechanical therapeutics, specifically laser scler scleral microporation. It is the first time we are presenting results of this innovative treatment. I am a consultant of ACE Vision. So presbyopia, uh, we know that there are many uh, postulations about the theories of presbyopia, and we think one of the mechanisms of presbyopia is stiffening of the sclera and the internal eye lens. So the problem is uh, we think there's some component of age-related scleral rigidity. As you can see, when you are young, the sclera has a little bit of flexibility, but when you're older, there's some amount of cross-linking that happens, making the sclera rigid. And the result is it makes the ciliary body move less. So in LSM, we use a erbium YAG laser on the sclera. And what we hope to do is do some uncross-linking of the collagen fibrils of the sclera. And when we do this, we hope that uh, we lessen the scler scleral biomechanical stiffness and allow ciliary muscle forces to move better. Lens changes shape better and it allows for more accommodation. So uh, this uh, animation, as you can see, is where the laser is firing and it does, it creates micropores and causes some sort of a sclera, we call it scleral uncrosslinking. So it hits scleral myofibrils and it restores the mechanical efficiency of the natural accommodative mechanism. So in this study, so far we have recruited 44 eyes or 22 patients. And the goal is to do LSM treatment in four quadrants in the sclera near the limbus in a five by five millimeter matrix using a proprietary ergum YAG laser. So uh, this is the theoretical uh, treatment. And in the next slide, I will show you a video of one of our treatments. So as you can see the sclera, we put ink marks on the four quadrants, so supernasal, infernasal, supertemporal, infertemporal, and there's a nozzle under the laser, and uh, you can see that the laser will fire on the sclera transconjunctivally. So it's like a matrix firing transconjunctivally to hit the, the sclera. So this is one quadrant, so it takes about uh, 10, 15 seconds to do one quadrant. Sometimes it's unavoidable that there are blood vessels that we hit, as you can see here. And there's a corneal shield that we use to protect the, the iris and the pupil so that the patient doesn't see a lot of glare during the procedure. So this is the third quadrant. And this is the fourth quadrant of the patient. So it doesn't take a long time to do this and it's totally painless on the patient. I'm actually talking to the patient to give them instructions where to look. And this is um, on the operating microscope. I focused on the area treated. And as you can see, there are micropores and we hit about 70% scleral thickness. And you see this uh, dark grayish hue. Uh, and a some punctures on the conjunctiva. So four quadrants are treated like this. So um, inclusion criteria for our study is age of at least 48 years old with at least a reading add of 1.5 diopters, but uh, emetropic presbyopic. So MRSE of within half a diopter. No other uh, previous surgery some patients have had vision correction. So um, our current population of 22 patients, the mean age was 54.5 years, and the mean reading add of our patients was two diopters. So here is a graph of the MRSE. We wanted to show you that 
we do not alter refractive uh, error. We do not change the refraction of the patient because we did not touch the cornea. So from pre-op to six months, the MRSE more or less is stable. Here are uncorrected visual acuities. Distance vision remains stable. Intermediate vision significantly improves from 0.2 to 0.07 to 0.01 at six months. And near vision also significantly improves from 0.47 to 0.25 and 0.18 lagmar from pre-op to six months. These are uncorrected visual acuities. And these are distance corrected or best corrected visual acuities. Corrected distance vision is similarly uh, is same. Intermediate vision is significantly better and near vision is dramatically better from 0.46 to 0.16 at six months. So this is a summary of visual acuities. In the first column is uncorrected distance vision. As you can see, they remain 2020 throughout from pre-op to six months. Intermediate vision has improved. So they usually start off as 2030. And then at the end of six months, they're usually 2020 or 2025. And uncorrected near vision, they're 2050 or worse. And at six months, they're usually about 2025 to 2030 or about J2, J2 to J3 in almost all patients. Distance corrected intermediate vision is significantly better and distance corrected near vision is also significantly better. So uh, we wanted to uh, take note of the near visual acuity distribution, distance corrected near vision. So <clears throat> pre-op, only 14% of patients were 2040 or better, but at six months, 90% were 2040 or better and 71% of patients were 2025 or better distance corrected near vision. So a significant improvement. So these are day one slit lamp photos. As you can see, you see the micro pores, they're about light to dark gray on day one. And there's some uh, there's conjunctival injection because we, we hit through sclera. So we irritated the conjunctiva a little bit. So there's a lot of redness in the treated areas. No pain from the patient, but they feel a little bit of scratchiness because I guess there's some defects in the conjunctiva, but so far no significant complaints. And at one week, you see that the conjunctival injection has mostly subsided. The eye is turning quiet and you see that the micropores are very visible through the conjunctiva. The cornea and anterior chamber are quiet and untouched. So patients do not notice or feel anything different. They don't notice any difference in far vision. So in conclusion, LSM or laser scleral microporation is a safe and effective procedure for restoring visual performance in the near and intermediate vision. The mechanism of action is still being studied, but our results are compelling and most patients gained at least 0.3 logmar in their near vision. So they notice an improvement. At the beginning, they see a little bit, but as they go along, they see better and better. And the most important finding that we have is no patient experienced any complication that decreased their best corrected distance vision. So our final thoughts about this new innovation um, in terms of uh, patients, they do notice an improvement in their quality of life. So they use less or almost no reading glasses. Actually, we try to tell them to try their natural near vision and not to wear reading glasses throughout the six to 12 month follow up. So most of them comply and they're functional. How about for the clinicians? For me specifically, I have other presbyopia treatments but when I correct press myopia, I sacrifice some form of distance vision. In this one, it's a significant addition because they are for press myopic patients. And what excites me the most is it doesn't affect far vision and it doesn't affect quality of vision. So 
We are very excited about this new laser mic scleral microporation technology, and we will continue to uh, do more patients and show you more results in the coming Congresses. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bobby. I'm, I'm going to ask a, a couple questions. Do you anticipate that there'll be a continued improvement in, in the near vision, the accommodation over the rest of the follow-up period in the study? So what we notice is on day one, they, they notice a mild improvement, but not a lot yet. And we encourage them and we actually push them to keep using their eye without reading glasses. So I, I kind of explain this as some sort of a muscle exercise, push their ciliary muscle to move. So the patients do experience improvement from one day to one month and then to three months. That's the biggest jump in improvement is from one month to three months. And then they're more or less stable. So we are in some patients up to six months and they're still improving. So I'm hoping that they keep on improving, but our longest follow-up is still only up to six months at this point. Okay. And is this a treatment that uh, the company anticipates will need to be repeated down the road or is it seen as a permanent presbyopic correction? So we are... We are ready for both eventualities. So actually, this is the generation one laser. And we're working on a generation two laser with a tracker because we need to uh, have a software that detects the micropores so that we can do additional treatments on the same spots. So we are anticipating that maybe over time, the presbyopia will worsen because of age. No? So this treatment is not a refractive change. It is some sort of a rejuvenation or we help the, the muscles move. So we anticipate a possible degradation over time because of aging or lessening of effects. So I think we have to be ready with some sort of a touch up. Okay. And as um, someone who I think of as Dr. Presbyopia, um, where do you see this fitting into your current arm, arm, treatment armamentarian of, of presbyopic treatment? So I think this, this is a niche product for emetropic presbyopes. So we have presbylasic for correcting refractive error and presbyopia, but Whenever we do some presbyopia treatment, whether we change aspherity, we, we sacrifice some far vision. So when I do presbylasic, I don't do bilateral presbylasic. I do one eye standard LASIK, one eye presbylasic. So if I have patients who have had conventional LASIK and grew old, this is the perfect product for them because it is just a natural presbyopia happening without any correction of refractive error. So the post LASIK is a definite uh, market for this and the natural presbyopes. You wouldn't believe how many natural presbyopes come to the clinic wanting something because they are now wearing reading glasses. So these two markets are quite big and I think this is a perfect uh, product for them. <laughs> 